have dedicated to the music, the melody of the murder horde, uh, dedicated to the culture uh, of the Mongolian country. I'm very glad to meet you here again today. Um, so today we will see and talk about the B, about the Bilge, especially the Bayat Ilkendik. So um, basically what is the B and Bilge? I will uh, go in detail in the uh, next episode of the Into the Murder, hopefully very soon. Uh, but just to give you a little idea of what is the B or Bilge. Bilge is the word uh, used by the Hatach uh, pronunciation, if I could say pronunciation, which is in the center of Mongolia, kind of the area of Ulaanbaatar. And B is the word used in the west of Mongolia. So um, this means kind of like um, in the west of Mongolia, it comes from B, which, which means I, then B, which means the body, and B is kind of like the movement of the body. So the B or Bilge are the melodies uh, that goes with the traditional dancing of Mongolia. Um, hello, Blaviken, and hello, Stevanovinch. Thanks for joining. Uh, welcome here. So the live uh, just started. I was uh, kind of giving some insight of what is the B and Bilge. So B, I, then B, the body, and B, which is the movement, kind of, uh, the dancing. So it's traditional dancing of the Mongolian culture, of the Mongol culture. Um, those B have many, many uh, different kinds of stories. And those Bs later kind of became Tatlak, which are uh, compositions. So a lot of Tatlak are directly inspired from the melodies of the B. Um, mostly the thing that are interpreted uh, in those dance, uh, it's kind of, uh, how, we, how do we say, the libation of the milk, maybe you saw, uh, which we say the satsat. There is also the, the offering for the nature, offering of the, the milk, or sometimes it can be the arrows, or it can be the tea and milk tea, uh, extra. Uh, it can be also the Morgul. So Morgul, it's more, uh, a little bit more religious, uh, but it's still related to the worship. Um, we will have the Ilkendik, which is what we will see today. I will uh, talk a bit later about that. Uh, we have um, all the Jaro Jatam, which are the rhythm of the, the horses, Balchinkir, uh, so basically, uh, we have also Setin Zatlo, Jore Geldin, which are more related to, to uh, I would say, um, the life in the, in the Ger, you know, uh, making the, the flower, uh, making things, the, making the strap of the leather and all that. Uh, we also have, anyway, uh, there is a, a lot of different kinds of bee, uh, always relating to the life, the nomadic life, the pastoral life of the Mongols. So today we will see uh, Bayat Ilkindik. Uh, I will play the version from uh, the very, I would say, uh, renowned uh, Ikelch, the Bayat Honon Ikelch Shreden Tzitzin. So she's in, she's still with us. Thanks, thanks, Tengir. Uh, she's in the west of uh, Mongolia and she, she's a, a real library of uh, Bayat melody. Uh, and the B, Ilkendik, Bayat Ilkendik is usually played uh, in the beginning of a B ceremony, if I could say ceremony, or when we start to have the dancing, usually the bayat, they start to, to play this melody. So 
if we make a comparison with the third, uh, which are the epic, epic singing, um, usually the, the third, the epics start with Altemaktal. And then when uh, the Altemaktal is finished, we start with whatever the third we wanted to, to, to melt, uh, if I translate, we say third Khaezah. So um, with the bayat, it's the same. Usually we start with Ilkendik and then we can, uh, we can play whatever the B we want, Jatlam, Satsal, Sonki, Hong, or whatever. There is uh, tons of them. So we will, I will play now uh, this bayat Ilkendik so you can have an idea of what we will see today. And then as we did with Chinggis Maktas, I will uh, kind of decompose each part. I made uh, the little, uh, I don't know if you can see, I made the little map, if I could say map uh, for the song, which I will put on the blog like I did with the, with the Chinggis and then with the Chinggis Maktas and then we will uh, get to that. So, Bayat Ilkendik. Yeah, um, why am I uh, very nervous? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm shaking. <laughs> So that's the melody Bayat Ilkendik. Um, as usual, as you know now uh, that we we are in the uh, 18th uh, live and there were a lot of episodes of Into the Murder World, you know that uh, this version is not, uh, I would say, absolute, of course, depending on the region uh, in the west of Mongolia, depending of uh, the different families of Bayat people, uh, depending on the different player, Ikelch uh, or Murderwatch, because now I will play on the Murderwatch, uh, but it's it's usually played on the Ikelch. I might play on the Ikelch uh, a little bit later. So this version is the version that is played by Lhaten Tsetzin, uh, which is in the west of Mongolia. She is a Bayat uh, Ikelch. But there is tons of version. The, the main idea is like that, um, but it's uh, the ornament and all that, as you know, it's always very kind of freestyle. So now I will present you the structure, which uh, can be changed a little bit. Uh, okay, so I hope that you can see. Okay, that's good. So we have one A, one B, one point is uh, one bow, and the rhythm is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think it's like a valse, right? <laughs> so the structure is like A four bows, B, four bows, then A again, B again. So basically those two are a repetition, A, B, A, B. Then we have a kind of A alternate, which is a little bit longer. Um, and then we kind of start to get into uh, the, the outro, I would say, with a C and C prime repeated, kind of. So know that uh, it's not like 
you you don't have to play exactly like that uh it can be a b a b a b then a prime c a b a b and and then c c prime whatever uh of course it's best if you kind of like uh keep this structure and eventually take this whole block and then once you finish if you want to play it longer then you repeat the whole you know uh you cannot for example make a c prime b c a prime b a like in crazy order uh so what you can do is like a b a b a b a b for example or um maybe after this one a prime you can go back to a, a b a b or something like that so there is some uh things that are freestyle and some things that we need to respect a little bit kind of so that's that's for the structure so we will get to see each little sentence so the a the b the a prime which is almost the same uh the c and, and all that so we'll get into that uh, right now so let's see if we have new person there Hello Bjorn, thanks for joining, I'm so glad. Hello Maurice, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, free four is normal for Valtz and Polka, I think. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a dancing, so yeah, definitely uh a Valtz. Hello Robus, thanks for joining. Uh so is the view okay or is that fine or something? Okay. Oh, my head is cut. Maybe I can put that a little bit further. Okay, that 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 should work. I think that should work. Uh, okay. So we will get to see each uh, sentence. So now the A. Maybe uh, let's tune first. Okay, I will give you the lower string. I might be tuned a little bit low. <laughs> because I was practicing with the archives. So, outside string. Thanks for joining. So that's for the alter string. Now the higher one. I don't know what is the tuning. Maybe it is something. As you know, I really like to have my motherboard super low in tuning, so that's why. So that should give you something like that. If you already have some questions about what I, I've just talked, uh, like the introduction about the Elkindic uh, or whatever, just feel free to, to leave a word in the chat and I will check it out and answer uh, on the fly. So as I will be kind of more into uh, showing the different parts, I might not check the chat too much uh, in the first part when I'm explaining uh, the different sentences, but then when we will have seen everything, we will have the discussion and I will answer the question you can have or eventually show uh, different things that you might need to see more in detail. So just feel free to ask on the chat. It's super welcome. 
and let's get to it. So now we are tuned. Okay, so we will see the first sentence, the A sentence, four bows. So. That's this little uh, sentence. The thing that you need to know is this little ornament. So if I can, if I play it very slowly. Again, one more time. So on the motherboard, this little uh, little finger ornament is on the inside string. I hope that you can see. Well, tell me if the camera is too far. Um, I will maybe close it up a little bit. So a little trick uh, is to kind of like, uh, I don't know how to say, but with this second finger that we are using here, You can reinforce uh, the accent because, as you know, it's a bilge. It needs to be very, um, very firm, kind of. It, the, the accent needs to be very present. Uh, if it's just like. It's, it's not really going to motivate the, the dancer to, to really move and and give the the movements and everything so it's very important to 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 be very aware uh, of all these accents so one you can do it um, with the the second finger like that ti ta ta ti oh ti ta ta ti ta ta Ti, ta, ta, kind of something like that. And then with the bow as well, uh, there is this kind of, as we talked before, this kind of like whipping uh, movement. So the idea is mostly with the, with the fingers. Ti ta da ti ta da ti ta da ti ta da ti ta da. So if I play just the bow, so just the bow, and then I put the note in it. time very slowly so you can really see kind of in the slow motion what is going on that's a little bit um, that's as you know that's a little bit tricky for me to play those pieces in pieces uh, because it's it's a very flowy thing uh, so cutting it in in little sentence that can be a little bit tricky uh, but well So again, this A sentence, a little bit in slow motion, kind of. Again. Now, more. Uh, like the real version. 
we can do 12 times. Now we did four, maybe we can do 12 times. So it can be, I'd say, can get in your mood, in the bow and everything. So maybe 12 times and then we move to the beat sentence. So A, 12 times. So, is it fine for this uh, A sentence? I will just check if there is a question or anything. Hello, Gerald Ma, thanks for joining. So, I don't know if there is a question. Seems that you are all rocking this B right now. So, to give you the map again, now we saw this first piece which is repeated one, two and kind of three times here. So we saw that. Now we will go to the B version. So I will play A and B together, just one, one A, one B, and then we will see the B uh, alone and then A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, a few times so it get into your uh, fingers and all that. Oh, so Blonde Vengeance is asking typically what kind of performers would dance to this piece? Uh, that's a very nice question, actually. Thanks for asking that. And the answer is very simple. Anyone, basically anyone who knows the Ekendek, who knows the movement, uh, it can be a grandpa, grandma, little kids, little boy, little girl, whatever. It can be anyone. Uh, that's the beauty of the bee because anyone is kind of invited to perform. Uh, it's not just like one person. Uh, this person will dance and the rest will not. It's a very community dance kind of. Everyone can, of course, if we are in a yurt and the space is very close, that might be difficult to be uh, 10 or 15 person dancing all together. So maybe that would be one and then the next one and, and so, so on. But if we are out uh, in the open, uh, outside just playing and there is enough space, then anyone can just follow and dance and perform. So. That's also why usually we are uh, doing the Z also in the beginning of the Bilge, like that. Basically, these empty strings played uh, together is an invitation uh, to, the, to the crowd to the person present there, like, okay, now I will perform Bayat uh, Ilkendik, okay. And then everyone will salute uh, kind of to each other and to the to the Naruhurch or to the Ikilch. And then everyone will start dancing uh, the Ilkendik. And usually, uh, if it's only one dancer, um, that's the dancer that will that will kind of say, okay, now it's it's done. We are we are done. Uh, the dancer will do his movement, and then he will start to kind of like uh, salute to the to the musician, and then ah okay, I need to stop. So then we stop with that, and then that's the end. So again, as we saw with the urtindo. The Merhorch or the Ikelch is following uh, the singer, the Urtindochin, or the Beach uh, or the, the Bilgic, uh, which is the dancer. So the dancer, the Merhorch start, invite the dancer, and then the dancer do his choreography and his movement and everything. And then uh, once the dancer 
had enough or, or is tired or the choreography is over. Okay, now we are done. And then the metal watch or the ikech will end the melody. Uh, kind of in in connection with the with the dancer so that's again a very interesting uh, question because now i play uh, with one manner with one uh, kind of accent and ornament and all that but depending on the person that you will follow uh, maybe the person will not be that energetic maybe the person will be more peaceful so then you need to adjust also the way you will play. Uh, if the person is very smooth, kind of, you cannot be super energetic in the, in, the, in the playing. And same, if the person is super energetic, you also need to put accent uh, in your playing. So the version that we are seeing today is kind of an average version, I would say. And then you can adjust uh, depending on the dancer, depending on what you like, uh, because it's always, as you know, very open, very open. So, um, so yeah, basically, as it's a very folk dance, uh, it's not made for the stage. It's not made for theater. It's just made for everyone to enjoy. Uh, so any person that knows the movement can be a performer and can dance uh, on, on the melody. Uh, it happened to me very, very often that I was actually starting to play a song, like a B, like that, uh, but there were not um, a person that was saying, okay, I will dance or whatever. So I just started the, to play the melody. And then it just like when the melody starts, some person just stand up and start to dance and, and and so on so that's that's very freestyle that's very improvised also uh, very often so that that's super that, i mean that's super awesome super great thing um also one thing that is very important to know now that we we talked a little bit about the subject um let's say we are all together right now uh for example i'm playing the the murder, as you can see Maybe another one is um, performing the dance and there is maybe 10 person uh, around watching. Usually the 10 person that are watching and listening, they should not uh, stay uh, immobile. They should also move like that. They should move at least the shoulder kind of to, to be part of the performance, um, not just to be watching it, uh, to be part with the dancer, part with the, with the musician, and, um, and also to give the energy, you know, kind of to motivate, ah, you can dance stronger, longer, or whatever. So the, even the spectators, if I could say the spectators, the person that are not performing the melody or the dancing, uh, or the B, they also kind of need to, to move like that. Uh, and actually not moving is, uh, it's a little bit rude, I think. Um, everyone should kind of move in the rhythm. So it's also very, 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 very nice to, to see, uh, especially while performing uh, the murder the to, to to play a B and have everyone moving like that all together and that's super super uh, awesome so i hope that it answered the the question i'm just checking because it seems that there was some activities on the chat uh hello a soup thanks oh get that it's in get that with john get that Hey Onu, how are you? Thanks for joining. Oh, Tumura! Seno and you and you, Orumbutel Sarano, Unduru. Ah, hoi hoi. That's great. We have some, some Mongols that joined the live. I'm super happy. Wow, so nice. Hey, Andras, I love the bee. Yeah, me too. That's super awesome. 
Hangai Ayu, Sembeno, Sembeno Ta, Serra or Chicheno. Zia. So we can get uh, again in this uh, biotech index. So I will play the A and B. Then we see the B alone. So again. One more time. Okay, now A, B, A, B. So you can see how the B and A connect together. And then we go for real to the B sentence. So now let's get to the B sentence. So again, four bows, four bows, sorry. I need to drink a little bit. I hope this first B is not uh, too difficult. I hope it's okay. I try to, to get the, the easiest one, kind of. So now we extract the B sentence. motion one more time one more time okay I guess that 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 might work out so maybe we can do a b a b a b a b maybe a few times kind of a little bit slowly so you can get it so maybe you might uh, make little mistakes in the first few tries so maybe let's do a b five time or something like that okay good luck I hope that it's uh, getting there. Now we can play it a little bit in a more real tempo, kind of. Now that was a little bit slow, I think. Was it slow enough? I hope it was. Tell me if you want a more, uh, a slower version, maybe. 
now let's do it kind of like real. For the A and B, let's see if there is anyone asking anything. Semino, hello, Lasha. I hope we'll play this together after lockdown. Batumur, ham tagilts hoy. Tishte, Lasha ta mover kuno. Lasha, how are you from Mongolia? Asking me to show how I speak Mongolia. Mongolian, Mongol language. So, some of you know that we Mongol students Тэгээд бид нар одоо дөнгөөд сай хэдэн нэг хоёр гурван сар юм уу нэг а уралдан байсан баяр сайхан одоо өвсөн урлаж иглийн урлаж бас морьгур урлаж баяр сайхан тэр нэг уралдан а байгуулсан тэгээд тэндээс хэдэн олон бичлэг үзээд жоохон архив маягтай тэгээд олон биеги үзээд ер нь одоо лайв ин лайв дээр би in which like sorat, they get dara at a long sing the kumus utsuljara, the alperjara, they get idol, towards jara, be, muhus be, the bees I jar on monster, yes. I don't know if anyone uh, understood. <laughs> okay, so show us to speak Mongolian. I hope we'll play this together. This is pretty effective, beautiful. <laughs> Greeting for, from Germany. <laughs> awesome. That's super great. So how is it so far, this A and B uh, sentence? Do you catch it? Is it enough? Uh, do you want me to play it in super slow motion? Do you have any question about the ornamentation, about the bow? Do you want me to to make a close-up or on any section or anything, feel free just to, to, to tell me. So we saw, I will just take uh, the, 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 the map again to, to, to show you. So you, I guess that you might uh, find this map a little bit more useful uh, when I will put it on the blog because you will be able to download the, the JPEG. Actually, you see, um, I hope that you see actually, uh, here I did put some, I, I put some arrows. So basically uh, those arrows are uh, the moment when the accent, the I note is eating uh, the, the kind of like, um, the, the the rhythm when the high note is eating the the on the rhythm so basically with the b it's eating directly on the bow so you can see here <laughs> and then before the a is like one two three so on the third third time of the three four i hope it's clear <laughs> 
Well, that's in my in my head. As I cannot read music, I don't understand music. It's super complicated for me. I do even more complicated, <laughs> uh, even more complicated diagram to learn the B and to share it. Anyway, you will be able to check it uh, on the blog. I will post the link uh, on the on the Discord, so you will be able to download that, and it might be a little bit more. Um, understandable if you have the map and you you listen to the song all together so what is good way to end the piece oh bjorn we will see the ending now it's not over uh, as you can see we did a b a b so now there is a kind of a with six bow six bow and then there is the outro so now let's see uh this outro so I will play the A, A, B again, and we will get to the outro. It's almost like a one-on-one -on -one lesson or something. <laughs> super, it's super cool. I hope that you enjoy this. Be big sharing by at Elkendek. If you like, push the thumb, subscribe to the channel, feel free to share. It's always very useful and very uh, appreciated. So A B A B A and maybe do it. this B it's so awesome so now uh, we will get to the last A so as you can see the A prime is not four bows but it's uh, it's a six so like that <laughs> So if I do just the, the two uh, last bows. Okay, so that's the last two bows of the A prime. And if I, let's, Okay, you are all super good. Let's make the A, C, C prime, C prime all together. Okay, you, you can you can do it. You can do it. You are all super awesome, talented and trying so hard. So let's make it all together. Maybe a few times, a little bit slowly first and then uh, in normal tempo. So we start from A prime. C, C prime, C prime. One more time.
So I see there is a few questions. Let me just check. Uh, Andrew asks, what is the difference between a beginner and advanced model? I will answer that when we finish the, the exercise because that might that might take a little time. So I will, I will answer that just after, okay? So let's uh, get to the final part again, maybe two times very slowly, kind of slowly. Uh, we could say that. Now let's play it maybe two times uh, in the in the real kind of real tempo, and then we play the full piece. Okay. So now A prime, C, C prime, C prime, the the outro kind of uh, all together, kind of in a real speed. Okay. <laughs> single little um, little sentence a a b b a uh, a prime c c prime everything so now we can maybe play uh, the song uh, like uh, like fully Bayat Ilkendik, you just learn uh, your first B, or maybe not your first, but the first one that I, I shared uh, officially, kind of uh, in the live and in the in the show. So I'm very glad that uh, we start with this Bayat Ilkendik, especially as this Ilkendik B is supposed to be played as an introduction for the Bilge for the B. So, and the Bayat, the Bayat melodies are super uh, 
mes mesmerizing i would say it, it's i mean it's impossible to listen to the melodies of the bayat and and stay like that immobile that that's not possible it's like the body is uh kind of like absorbed in this mood and all that so that's that's uh that's super super awesome maybe i can try to to play it on the on the ekels now i played a lot on the murder horse so my brain might uh be a little bit confused so it should be played on this uh so that's a nickel so you can see that the pegs are a little bit different the head is different there is no horse um so so yeah it's it's um to talk a little bit about uh, the the symbols this is the symbol of chan the fire the lotus which is a, a symbol of strength and the worship of nature so that's kind of like different from the Nerhur, although it's a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe I can make the comparison between the two bodies. So you see that the, the Ikel has a, a little bit a little bit of smaller a smaller body. Whoa. <laughs> That's uh, when it's played on a nickel. So as you can see, the 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 lower string is inside and the higher string is outside. So the the playing is a little bit different. Uh, also, the bow is quite different, as you can see. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to to show you because this is a B. This should be. I mean. We can play on the Malhur, of course, but the B is traditionally played on a nickel, not on the Malhur. So I wanted to show also that uh, how it should be how it should be uh, played, like on the no, on the original instrument, which is a nickel. So now I saw that there were some few questions, so maybe we can have a little bit of discussion. Uh, as usual, if you have some questions and so on, actually there were few questions uh, on the Discord, which I wrote there, so we can also go through that. So first, let me check. So Andreas, I'm not forgetting you. The difference between a beginner and advanced uh, instrument. Whoa, 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 there is a lot. Okay, so... I will start with uh, this question about Andras, uh, the question of Andras about beginner and advanced Merhor. Um, that's too bad that I don't really have. Um, okay, let, let, let me take, give me one second. I will take a few instruments, okay? Normally we should not do that.
Okay, let's put that there. And there is one more. Okay. I hope I didn't lost you guys during my uh, traveling. So, difference between a professional, uh, a beginner and an advanced uh, instrument. Obviously, the wood quality. So, if I take this one, for example, this is more like a study instrument. It's not very advanced so uh, it's it's kind of old it's from 2000 it seems um, so as you can see for example oh actually the wood is pretty I don't know if you can see ah here okay I don't know if you can see those lines this is kind of the sign of uh, a good quality wood. So actually this instrument is pretty, uh, back in that time when it was made, it was, it was pretty good. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna ring actually. Oh yeah, nice. Uh, a little bit of my collection. That's uh, kind of like an average uh, I would say. Uh, you can see, for example, that the, the wood here of the neck is not very precious. It's a very simple wood. Also, you can see here that the, the, the grip of the instrument is not made with, uh, with a very noble wood. It's a, it's a very, actually, yeah. I think it's, it's just simple wood that is, has been painted. Um, also another difference is the pegs. Uh, the pegs are not made from very strong wood. So it means that over time, the pegs are gonna be softer and, and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to tune. So there is uh, this instrument, for example. So I will just put that maybe here. Then and one that you might, that you guys might know. I, I didn't think that I would put my Melville out actually today. Uh -huh. So now you can see a difference uh, of body here. Um, there is some fancy Thing. So this instrument actually, I paid it a very, very huge amount of money, but it's uh, not really worth it, actually. So I was a little bit scammed, if I could say, but the, 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 the sculpture kind of, the, the, the carving is very cool. 
so well, so you can see, for example, here that the pegs are made from uh, rosewood, I think redwood. So this is much better. So it means that it will hold uh, well longer in the time. It's it's very hard wood. So for the pegs, it's pretty good. Then you can see here that the grip is made out of ebony. So it's also very thick. So uh, it's really going to help the, the instrument uh, hold its shape, especially the, the neck. So this is also ebony. So I was a little bit fancy. I asked to the guy to carve uh, words in the in on the neck. But the wood of the box is very simple. So for example, you can see that there is not these kind of stripes of lines. Uh, so this wood is of very average quality uh, for the box. So actually, Compared to the previous one, the neck is pretty good on this one, but the box is very simple. Um, so let's hear it. Didn't play this buddy for a while. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. sound is still pretty interesting. one so yeah this is this was actually the first uh, wooden motherboard that i bought when i came uh, in mongolia then another comparison is this one um so here again you can see that the box have a very very uh, it, kind of simple wood here. There is a little bit of lines, but it's very uh, kind of simple. So like that. So this one is also kind of basic one. Also, I kind of make a comparison of all the instruments so you can have different uh, ideas of what is possible. Here it's also the rosewood. Here it's also rosewood. Uh, this is simple wood, so you can also check actually instrument um, if the tail, the tail is made of real wood or if it's just simple wood that is painted. So here that's the case. <coughs> Obviously, if it's like real rosewood, redwood, or uh, ebony, that's much better. So here, that's another kind of average instrument. I don't really have super high uh, quality wooden instrument because I play on skinned instrument now for a while. Uh, but basically, the very high uh, quality instrument made uh, in, in wood like that they would tend to look a lot like a cello or like a violin. 
with the, the same kind of wood, the same kind of lacquering, a uh, lot of ebony. Sometimes there would be um, kind of the, the, the precious stones inside like there is on the on the bow of the the violin and the cello so that's kind of like to give you an idea i hope it's a little bit helpful uh, maybe i can cut this one there so to to sum up i just wanted to give you some visual so you can have a little bit of an idea of different shape and stuff of different kind of motherboard that you might encounter now to give you a proper advice uh, the huge difference of course it's gonna be the wood it's gonna be the lacquering it's gonna be the pegs um, so you need to be very careful on what the pegs are made of uh, if it's very hard wood like ebony or redwood or if it's simple one like uh, spruce or or pine stuff like that so that's the first thing that you need to be aware of then the lacquering is actually giving you a very huge uh, idea of the quality of the instrument usually cheaper instrument the lacquering is just one or two layer made with a pistol um, then once it's made there is no polish or anything on it so it's a very uh, rough kind of it's it more like it looks more like a table or a furniture than an instrument. And when you go to high quality instrument, then the polish start to be uh, much like you can see it's a mirror. So this, the, it's the instrument that I made. There is like a 14 layer of lacquering, which is organic made of uh, rosin and uh, kind of like spirit, like alcohol, kind of rosin, and then it's like 14 layer or something. So 12 layer, then polish like this, then two layer, then polish again to have this very high quality uh, finish. So now this instrument is almost four years old, so it's not perfect anymore because it, it traveled a lot. Um, but yeah, the polish is also something that will give you a big idea of, of uh, the quality of the instrument. So um, yeah, I think that's kind of it. Also, don't be, um, I would say, cheated. I would say cheated by how the horse head is uh, carved. Even though the horse head can be super realistic, super beautiful, super nice, it doesn't mean that the, the, the instrument is good. Um, there is two different things between a good instrument and a great carving. Sometimes the instrument is great and the carving is great. Sometimes only the instrument is good and the carving is a little bit poor. Sometimes it's the instrument that is poor and the carving that is great. So a great carving of the horse set doesn't mean that the instrument is uh, great or it's of good quality. So I hope that it answered the question. I went a little bit off road uh, with this question. I hope it helped. Uh, Gid lives for Ian. Hello, thanks for joining. So he asked or she asked, similar to any instrument, it would be the build quality, rarity of material, brand name. Oh, he actually answered the, the question. I should, have, I should have read. <laughs> but that does not mean a beginner instrument are bad or low quality. Yeah, uh, as Gid said, from I, I'm, I'm selling a study instrument uh, for beginner. And out of these studies instrument, sometimes there is very precious, very awesome uh, instrument. So beginner cheap instrument doesn't mean that the instrument is bad or it's not going to evolve. Um, it's a very vast question. So the best is to check the instrument itself, see how it was made, how long it took to be made, uh, the wood and so on. And then we can judge. So in the package that I sell, like the are around 110 euro or something like that. Out of 10, maybe two are super crazy awesome. They are worth 
worth maybe 500 euro or something uh, even though they are only 100 that's usually the one that i choose and that i ship to my customers then there is maybe six or seven that are uh, actually like uh, maybe one one 200 euro worth and one or two that are pure garbage because the wood had so many mistakes and maybe it was made quickly or anything because it's a little bit I would say made um, not industrially, but they make many instruments together. So as Git said, uh, if it's expensive, doesn't mean it's good. If it's cheap, it doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, you need to check the instrument. Uh, Alperin Silvelik, hello. I hope you're still here. So I see that you are asking also um thanks for joining so what is the name of the thing you are wearing well that's uh that's a Mong mongol shirt uh it's uh it's not a dirt actually because it's just the the the, the shirt uh but it's made with the same design uh of the of the mongol dirt so so yeah that's uh just tamt if we say mongol mongol tamt and then the ad, kind of uh, normal ad. So yeah, I have the boots also. E. Mongol, Mongol style with the ornament and everything. Uh, Lasha is asking, um, <laughs> is Murderhor hard to learn? And Bjorn is saying it's difficult to buy one. <laughs> Actually, that's very true. Um, well, Maruhur, the Maruhur, to learn the Maruhur is not that, I don't know, how to, if I say it's not difficult, then people might think I'm arrogant or I'm lying or I don't know if I, and if I say it's hard, people will give up too quick. So I think that it really depends on how much you love it and how much you enjoy and how much you are ready to fail uh, because it's a, uh, of course, it, the motherboard is more difficult than a guitar or a piano um, because there is a bow. The bow is a foreign object. Uh, you're not playing the string with your fingers or with your hand directly. So it's a, it's, it, it, ne it needs a little bit of, uh, of time to be comfortable with it, but if you love it, then you can just keep practicing. And I've made a bunch of video to help you learn. So normally it should be quite uh, easy to get to it. I would say more than difficult, I would say that to learn the murderhood, it takes some time. Um, you cannot be good in uh, To You cannot play the murderhood super great after a few weeks or a few months. Um, you need to practice it, you need to feel the instrument, you need to understand the culture, especially if you play traditionally, uh, you need to see the countryside and understand the, the background of the, the history of Mongol and, and, all, and all that. So it's not too complicated, it's not too difficult, but it takes time and it takes uh, a bit of research. So yay, that's a really nice tune, thanks. Well, there is so many uh, common things I didn't see. What is the name of that piece? The piece that I played, the uh, kind of the fast one, it's uh, Om Zan Tan Chire. This, uh, Bjorn, this one? <laughs> So, yep, I think that I talk too much. We lost a bunch of person. <laughs> so, if there is still a person, people on the live, do you want me to do a Urtindo practice? 
Do you want to make some Urtindo practice? Oh, hello, Magne. How are you? Thanks for joining us. I think you came maybe a little bit late. We already see the Ilkindik, the, the B. So shall we do a little Urtindo practice on, on... Oh, actually, there were questions on the Discord. My God. Question of the Discord now. <laughs> I, I got carried away with the previous question and showing I wanted to share my instrument with you guys. So one question was, um, do the note positioning sometimes change a little when playing in different tuning? So uh, this question was asked by Bjorn on Discord. Well, Bjorn, uh, the notes should not change position when you change the tuning. Uh, basically, if you play a scale, let's say, let's do just the first four note, okay? If I change the tuning, the position should be the same. But of course, um, if this nut is a fa, then I, well, that's going to be too complicated. The position, the, the mark that I wrote on the neck are always okay, right? If you make a fa, si bemol, re, whatever, do, something, and so on, doesn't matter. All those marks will be the same. The position will be always the same, always good. You just need to be careful that the bridge here is on the right position because when you tune, when you change, when you change the tuning, your bridge might move a little bit. So if it change, see? Don't move it that much, maybe just like uh, one centimeter, but you can hear that the, the, the tuning change a lot. So if the bridge is not on the right position anymore, all the mark will be wrong. So it's not dependent of uh, the tuning you have on each string. It's going to be dependent on the position of the two bridge. So I hope that it answer uh, the question. Okay, and there were another little question on Discord, and then we will do then uh, in the practice. The second question was uh, I hope that it answered the the, que the question about the the position of the note. Uh, tell me, Bjorn. I see I see that you are still here. Tell me if the answer is okay. Then the second question was, how? Ah, on the bow, on the bows that does not have adjusting screw, how do we adjust the tension? Uh, is it normal that some hairs uh, seems loose? So here is my bow. You see that it's it's a uh, it's not in tension. Even though I have a screw, it's always very loose. Uh, so it's totally normal to have some hair being a little bit uh, more loose than other, because then we will put the tension uh, with the, the, the fingers. So now it's loose. Now I put the tension, you see. So basically, if when you are when the bow is uh, not used, you have some loose hair, doesn't matter. Actually, for traditional playing, it's best to have um, loose hair. So I don't know if on this bow, yeah, that's similar. So no problem at all. The adjustment is with the finger directly. Uh, you don't need to 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 have crazy tension on the hair. 
Okay. So let's get into an Urtendo practice. I should put that a little bit and today maybe the tuning of the instrument will be a little bit lower than usual we just bring a little bit so I will not uh, say the rules again you already up know it all so maybe just a little bit higher so it's already be one hour 20 minutes whoa by the way if you like the if you like the live uh you enjoy the content seeing all those instruments the answer you liked uh, how to play the b the elkindic the bayat elkindic please push the thumb subscribe on the channel uh, put a comment uh, if you have more questions feel free to ask in the comments or in the chat right now I will answer after the Urtindo practice so every like every share every subscription is super appreciated thanks a lot for your support everyone I'm super glad to see you here uh, again so now Urtindo practice first we tune and then we get into the melody lower string it's gonna be interesting to have a Urtindo practice with lower uh, tune string normally we should already be tuned as we did the tune so let's get into the Urtindo improvisation good luck and enjoy
always being super peaceful after this exercise. <laughs> like the total meditation. So. Let's see if there is uh, some interaction in the chat. Uh, and, and well, if not, then that will be it for today. And it's easier, and it's easier to play with loose hair on the bow than any kind of hug. Yeah, definitely, Magne. Uh, loose hair is much more comfortable, much more uh, super awesome, much more feeling, much more... Um, for the Urtindo and the bee, I mean, loose hair are the best. So definitely uh, play with loose uh, hair. Like... F the fret, F the tight hair. <laughs> As I say with some of my, with one of my good friends, we are always like F the frets and F the tight hair on the bows. So, well, I guess that's it. I'm glad that you enjoyed uh, this uh, this live today. So again, if, if, if it was, if it was pleasing for you, you learned nice stuff and it was interesting, push the like, uh, click the like button, share uh, the live, uh, join us on Discord. Uh, definitely, you are all very welcome to join us. By the way, next Saturday, it's gonna be the one year anniversary um, of the Into the Murderhole show, like one year, day by day, exactly one year. Uh, it's also going to be uh, a one year anniversary for the, um, I would say, Orol community and all that. So next live uh, might be a little bit uh special <laughs> so definitely be there next saturday uh, i will try to make some surprise for you guys so definitely uh join us next saturday for the one year anniversary yay i want to drink arak <laughs> i want to drink arak but the thing is that we are in lockdown for two more weeks so i actually uh, starting tomorrow we are in super hardcore lockdown here in mongolia so i already buy i already bought the, the cake <laughs> i bought it today for next saturday because i'm not sure if we will be able to to get uh to get out during those two weeks uh because the last two weeks of lockdown were a little bit messy so these two weeks might be much uh more uh i would say um straight and and strict kind of so i thought like next next day uh, next saturday it's the anniversary i need to if i don't have cake and so i already bought it <laughs> So yeah, I will try to make a, a little bit, um, uh, a little bit special live and maybe a little bit different from usual. I don't know, maybe with some brush and ink or something. Plavikan, if you are here, you might not want to miss the next one. <laughs> so definitely, uh, next year or uh, next Saturday, one year anniversary special live episode about to celebrate uh, the Orol community and, and all that. I will, uh, I will not talk about that now. So we'll meet uh, next Saturday. And, uh, and well, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed. As usual, feel free to share, uh, feel free to like, post a comment, join the Discord. If you want to support what I do, you can uh, subscribe on my website or you can uh, make a single donation if you wish for this content to keep going and yeah I think that's it 
All information is in the description. You can check it out. And for those who wanted to uh, learn the Bayat Ilkendik, know that tomorrow, not today, because I need to wait for the video to be uh, processed by YouTube. But tomorrow I will put all the chapter on the video and I will put everything uh, and especially this little map on the blog of my website stevemorel.info so you will be able to check it out tomorrow so thanks again for joining i hope that you enjoyed this live and may the blessing of the eternal blue sky be upon you all love see ya